the single coolest way of solving differential equations is the Laplace transform. So why are differential equations hard in the first place? Well, for example, this equation is hard because we can't manipulate it algebraically in any direction, honestly, because, well, algebra doesn't have a clue on how to add a function to its derivative. But what would happen if we could manipulate this thing algebraically? I mean, what would have to happen in order for us to be able to do so? Well, we would have to integrate both sides, maybe? Well, not quite, because if we integrate both sides, on the left-hand side, yeah, we're gonna get that y that we desired, I mean, we're gonna get rid of that derivative, of the y, but the current y is going to change to its antiderivative, which is just as hard to deal with as the original derivative on the left hand side. So what we really need to do in order to be able to algebraically manipulate this equation somehow is a method of integrating the derivative of y, but not y itself, or maybe rather integrating y prime more times that we integrate y is the a way to do it? And there is a way to do it. I mean, just think about integration by parts. So it's given by this formula here. And if we manage to choose, you know, some nice function g that will make this thing work, we'll be left with just two integrals of the function y multiplied by the g. And hopefully we'll get something out of that, yeah? So what would be the best choice for g? Well, probably some kind of a function whose derivative is itself uh, multiplied by some constant. For example, e to the st, that might be an intuitive choice, but I would like to make it e to the negative st so that that negative sign cancels out when performing integration by parts later on. And now if I multiply everything by e to the negative st in my differential equation, well, I get something that looks like this. And it actually starts to look something that I can work with, but I still have that y times e to the negative st that I really don't like, honestly, because it still messes up with everything. It's still going to be some kind of a derivative thing of those two guys inside of those integrals. So it's still just as hard to deal with as it was at the beginning. So I want to get rid of it. And how do I do it? Well, I would like to make that thing be some kind of a number. I don't want it to be a function, I want it to be a number. So how do I make a function become a number? Well, by plugging values. So I could, for example, plug in some bounds, I could make all those integrals, definite integrals on some bounds a and b, and what bounds would be nice for me to plug in? Let's just examine that e to the negative st term that I'm multiplying my y by. If I plug t going to infinity, for example, then that exponential is gonna just drag down to zero, and I will not have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, awesome. And if I plug in t equal to zero, for example, then that exponential is gonna just disappear, it's gonna, well, become a one, and I'm gonna be left with just my function y evaluated at zero. Well, I love it because that's my initial condition I'm given, that's you know, y of zero equal to zero there, yeah? And now I finally can manipulate this entire thing algebraically. But first of all, a bit of notation. I mean, what I did to those poor functions, I mean, multiplying them by that e to the negative st factor and then taking the definite integral of them on the interval from zero to infinity is such an important concept in maths because it enables us to manipulate algebraically differential equations. It was given its own name. It was given the name of Laplace transform because it was, well, invented by the guy whose name was Laplace, I guess. And the Laplace transform is noted as this thing right here, and it just states the Laplace transform of y of t, that is a function of s, without a function of s, which is this integral of y of t times e to negative st on the bounds of zero and infinity with respect to t. But now I can finally clean this mess up, I mean, I can finally solve for something in terms of y, I can manipulate that stuff algebraically, I can just solve for the Laplace transform of y, and also let me just evaluate that integral on the right-hand side real quick, so it doesn't look as bad as it does now, and we're left with this equation here. Okay, so we have the Laplace transform of y solved for, but I'm not really looking for the Laplace transform of y, I'm looking for y itself. So how do we retrieve the function that we're looking for here? We can use the inverse Laplace transform, that is a function who just asks a question of what other function gives this following expression under the Laplace 
transform. And normally you would have a table for that, I mean the table of Laplace transforms, which was, you know, made by mathematicians over hundreds of years who were just studying this Laplace transform stuff, and who just discovered a lot of transformations and stuff like this, but we won't be using this thing today, I would like to do this one by hand. Let's first of all simplify this mess in terms of S in the inverse Laplace transform using partial fractions, because I would like to show you guys two very important properties of the Laplace transform. It's linearity, namely. So we know that Laplace transform is pretty much just integrating stuff and multiplying it by just that e to the negative st. We know that multiplication is a linear operator and we know that integration is a linear operator. I mean, we can say that the integral of the function f plus the function g is the same as the sum of the integrals separately. You can say that whenever we are multiplying a plus b by some kind of a c is the same as multiplying a by c and then adding the product of c and b separately. Okay, I love it because it will just mean to me that I can first of all make that inverse Laplace transform a sum of two inverse Laplace transforms and that it can also go on and take out those one halves from it so I get this simplified expression here. So what two functions will give me those two expressions under the Laplace transform? I would like you guys to consider this integral here, namely the Laplace transform of the function e to the power of a times t. When we evaluate it, we'll get this expression right here, which looks very similar to what we've got inside of those inverse Laplace transforms. And actually, if we plug in certain values for a here, here, there's no problem for us to just plugging those a's also inside of our original function and then just dropping those Laplace transforms by the inverse Laplace transform. And that's exactly how we arrive at the conclusion that those are the two functions we're looking for. And, you know, when we sum them up together, we will get y, which is exactly the function we're looking for from the very beginning. So to quickly wrap stuff up, what we did here is we thought of the idea of algebraically manipulating a differential equation and came up with a function that when we multiply the entire differential equation by and then integrate all that stuff out by parts, we will get something that we actually will be able to work with algebraically and then just using some inverse Laplace transforms retrieve the function we're looking for originally. And it works with high order differential equations as well. If we were to add a y double prime up there, well, there is no problem for us in solving the Laplace transform as well. We would just have to integrate that y double prime by parts twice to end up with that integral of dy of t times e to the negative st. And so the general concept is as follows. If whenever we have a differential equation, we just take the Laplace transform of both sides of it and then solve for the Laplace transform of our function y in terms of the newly brought variable s, then what we do is we simplify the expression on the right hand side, probably using partial fractions, then just either guess or use a table of Laplace transforms to figure out what functions gave those expressions in terms of s in the course of Laplace transform, and then we just solve for our function y. Okay, so well, this is certainly not all there is to know about Laplace transforms and how to solve all these using them. There are gonna be loads of problems on my channel in the future when I'm gonna be solving much much more complicated differential equations than the one we solved today, but the idea stays the same in all of those. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, you got some value from it, see you in the next one.